right behind me, right behind me, He's like hammering constantly. I know. Welcome back to Hourless Life where we're driving around the world. You have been asking us for a walk around tour of Dauntless, our Jeep Gladiator, ever since we finished the build last year. We are so excited to finally bring that to you today. There is a lot to cover on this build. I'm gonna take you around the exterior. Brittany's gonna take you through the interior. And just so you know, this gear wasn't just slapped on and reviewed. That's right. Today is actually our one year anniversary since leaving the United States. We have driven through all of interior Mexico, all of Central America down to Panama where we are now and we have rigorously field tested everything on this Jeep. We've even been through a tornado in Honduras and a hurricane in Costa Rica. Suffice it to say we have some hard-earned off-road miles in this Jeep, a ton of river crossings and eight international border crossings so far. That's what makes this walk around tour so valuable for you. We are full-time overlanders and this is our home. Keep in mind, we don't have the luxury of hopping into our favorite off-road shop that carries our favorite brands. I mean, we can't even go on Amazon and have stuff shipped down here. It's a lot of logistical hoops and people always want to know about money. So let's get that topic out of the way. We have a ton of our own personal funds put into this Jeep and we've never had a monetary sponsor before. However, we do have 27 amazing gear sponsors who made this build that you're going to see in this tour happen. And we are so grateful to them. Yeah. And we're going to go ahead and link who they are in the description of this video in case you're curious and want to check those out. I might even be part of the tour. Let's Dauntless is a 2021 Jeep Gladiator Sport S with a max tow package, which essentially is the trim on this model, which gives you the highest payload. We have a payload of 1,565 pounds. You could actually increase the payload on the Gladiator to 1,700 pounds if you opted for the manual transmission, but we didn't build Dauntless as a rock crawler and nothing is on this vehicle by accident. As a matter of fact, there are some things we don't have on this vehicle because he's not a rock crawler and that keeps weight off of the vehicle. For example, you'll notice that we don't have rock sliders on here. Why? We're not rock crawling. This vehicle was designed as a global touring vehicle that we could fit inside a container to ship across the world's oceans. This is our home. I am so excited to show it to you. This is the Alucab Canopy Camper built in Cape Town, South Africa. It weighs in at 462 to 551 pounds, depending on how you have it kitted out. We had ours installed at Juniper Overland in Denver, Colorado. If you're interested in that, we've got a full video of the install of the Canopy Camper right here on our YouTube channel. The Alucab Canopy Camper is a fantastic unit. It has three windows, one on this side, one on the other side, and one in the back. It also is pre-wired for solar and it has this wedge sleeping area up top. Coming in over here, you'll see that it has these side wing doors that open and close. It has these mozzie nets or midge nets to protect us from insects that zip open and closed very easily. And it features five of these National Luna lights, which can swivel and have three settings in white and in red. We also opted for this molly panel. It's the corner unit molly panel from Alucab, which we use to hang things that we want access to very quickly when we're at camp. I want to take a moment before I show you the rest of the exterior and talk a little bit about the philosophy behind how we built Dauntless. This is really important and the kind of thing you can only gain from experience. Brittany and I have been traveling full time for nine years without owning any home or property and Caspian has been a full time traveler since birth. When we first started designing Dauntless, we knew that three things were going in this vehicle, me, Brittany, and Caspian. And that meant that we had to design the build around where Caspian was going to be sitting. Obviously, Brittany and I were sitting up front. We wanted to have diagonal access to Caspian from the passenger seat so that whoever was sitting there could minister to him, whether that was reading books, passing him snacks, or whatever. Also, by putting Caspian behind the driver, that reduced distraction for the driver during long driving days. Positioning Caspian behind the driver meant that the rear passenger seats on the passenger side of the vehicle could be removed. We did that and that provided us a space to put our fridge. This was important and intentional because the fridge inside the vehicle, which is climate controlled, has longevity because it doesn't have to work as hard to stay cool. Also, we can grab food and snacks while on the road. And lastly, 
The fridge doesn't take up precious space inside the interior. But what quickly became clear to us was that because of where we placed the fridge, the place where we would be hanging out was gonna be on the passenger side of the vehicle. This then determined where the next few accessories that I'm gonna show you were placed on this build. Since we determined that our living space was going to be on the passenger side of the vehicle, we installed the Alucam Shadow on right here on the passenger side, which you can see is a 270 degree awning and it only takes 30 seconds to deploy and about a minute to stow. The speed of deployment and stowage was a really important factor in how we decided to build this vehicle. This awning can withstand pretty much everything. We've had it through torrential downpours and heavy winds. We don't use guy ropes or the support poles. It's rainy season here in Honduras. In case you couldn't tell, there are thunder showers all around us right now. We learned, however, that this awning could not withstand a tornado, and we actually got our awning completely destroyed by a tornado while we were in Honduras. Today, we are in central Honduras. It's rainy season. Our shadow on just exploded. There's been a torrential downpour. Rainy season here in Central America is no joke, but thanks to our friends at OK Four Wheel Drive and TJM Costa Rica, we were able to get this awning replaced, and the one we have here is a brand new one. You can watch a full video on that as well. We'll link it in the description below. When the Alucap Shadow awning is deployed, we can access our fridge, pass things through the passenger side wing door, and access our habitat all while under the protective covering of the awning. The Alucap Shadow on also features an elevation stanchion which we can raise up in order to give slope to the awning to get the rain off. In addition, Alucab has created a rain gutter and this gutter fills the space in between the awning and the back of the Alucab so when the rain comes down, it doesn't get in between you and entering the habitat. Speaking of the main entry door, we actually had this door flipped. Normally the Alucab main door opens from left to right, but that wouldn't work for us since our entire living space is here on the passenger side. So we actually had the team at Juniper Overland flip this door around to open from right to left. Hi, this is my vehicle. Giving us this smooth access all the way around the vehicle. In order for Juniper Overland to flip this door, several things happened. Number one, we had to relocate the National Luna Light on the rear, which is right here. And we had to relocate the rear facing camera, which we have down here. When you flip the door, this bar, which allows you to open and close the door, had to be switched. Normally this bar is on the bottom when you open it from right to left, but because we flipped the door, the bar is on the top, and that's actually easier to reach up and open the door like that. In addition, since this was our living space, we added a gravity-fed water spigot right here, which feeds from the Alucab water tank inside. And we added this NOCO shore power charger also on this end since we had that usable space. So again, all of this is intentional, all based on the passenger side of the vehicle being where we were going to spend most of our time keeping this area clean. Years of full-time overlanding experience has shown us that there's a concept that you should consider when building out your rig, and that's the concept of a clean side versus dirty side. The clean side is gonna be the side of the vehicle where you live, like where you place your chairs, where you're gonna eat, where you're gonna cook, where you're going to spend time hanging out outside. And on Dauntless, our clean side is the passenger side. The awning covers it, it keeps the ground from getting dirty and muddy, and basically when we access the interior of the vehicle, we're not tracking a bunch of stuff in because we're keeping the side clean. Now let's look at the dirty side. On the dirty side, we start with our door on this side kind of separates the other side and we have a spare tire mounted here using the Alucab spare tire bracket which attaches to the main door and can hold up to a 33 inch tire. We also have the Blue Ridge Overland Gear extra large tire bag which is essentially our trash bag. Then here mounted on the side wing we have the Max Tracks which we got through Adventure Imports. These have been fantastic. We were stuck in the mud in Nicaragua and Max Tracks and our Demos Delta Pro shovel saved the day. We have a complete video on that, which you can watch us try and get out of the mud of Nicaragua. They are kept on here by an Expedition Essentials mount, which holds up to four Max Tracks. They make them in two and four. We opted for the four, and that's locked on here via our mount. Inside here, we actually have our shower head, 
right here. And that shower head we use to spray off the Max Tracks. We also use it when we are using our shower cube, which is also by Alucab. When this deploys, it creates a box. And in that box, you can go in there, you can change, you can shower, or you can actually put your toilet in there. We put our Thunderbox USA toilet in there when we don't have facilities available to us on our overland journey. You can imagine with spraying the Max Tracks down or using the toilet or taking a shower, the ground on the driver's side of Dauntless gets pretty nasty. It can get muddy and dirty and all kinds of funky. So this is the dirty side of Dauntless. We don't live on this side, we live on the clean side. Clean versus dirty, important concept for any overland build. So that's the dirty side of Dauntless. You can see the huge difference there. Let's take a look at what we've done to the front of Dauntless. So right here on the hood, you'll notice that we have this panel. This is actually a solar panel. It's by Cascadia 4x4 and it's called the VSS or Vehicle Solar System. It provides 80 watts of power to both our cranking battery and the auxiliary battery that comes standard with the Jeep Gladiator. On top of the Alucab Canopy Camper, we have two 100 watt solar panels that are providing power directly to our lithium battery, which is our Renogy 170 amp hour lithium battery that provides power to our entire habitat. On the passenger side of Dauntless, we have the AEV snorkel and the Cyclone pre-filter. This combination is so effective that we have not had to change our engine air filter since we installed this on the vehicle. This system provides cool, cold air that goes directly into our engine. It's not just for water crossings, it's for dust and the coolness of the air. For our front bumper, we opted for the Rock Hard 4x4 Patriot full width series bumper with lowered winch plate. That's a mouthful, but it's a fantastic bumper. It's a quarter inch thick aluminum that's powder coated and get this, it only weighs 37 pounds. For an overland rig, especially a Gladiator, I can't think of a better bumper than this. Attached to this bumper, we have the worn Epic shackles. We have two of them. Sitting inside our bumper on the lowered winch plate is the worn 9.5 XP winch. When we asked Warren, what winch should we take to drive around the world? They did not hesitate and said that this winch was their workhorse, the 9.5 XP. They also provided us with the Spidura Nightline rope, which is lightweight and much safer than your standard steel cable. It also reflects light in the evening, so if you have to do nighttime winch operations, that's helpful for you. And inside here, we have the hub wireless controller, which means I can control this winch from an app on my phone also thereby increasing the safety as I'm able to distance myself from the winching operations. Attached to the end of our winch line, we have the Factor 55 limited edition orange flat link. Really happy with this. It's actually safer than your traditional winch hook and that is pressed up against the worn Haas Fairlead. Right above it, we have this little nifty device called the Flipster by Cascadia 4x4, which allows me to simply move our license plate out of the way for winching operations. All right, let's talk about lighting. On Dauntless, we left the headlights alone. They're so bright, oncoming motorists don't like them as it is, so we didn't even touch those. But we did add the Rigid Industries fog lights, which have been really helpful, especially during the rain and fog that we've experienced on this journey. We also added the E-Series Pro 10-inch light bar, which has a ridiculous range and is a drive spot combo. On the hood, we have two sets of pod lights. The outer ones are floods, the inner ones are spots. So we're able to flood the area and spot as well. It's a great combination for every imaginable situation we could find ourselves in. On three sides of Dauntless, we've added scene lights. These are also by Rigid Industries. We have an amber light and a white light. Our amber lights are here and they're not blocked or covered by anything because we use those to light our camp at night. They don't attract as many bugs. They do attract some, but not as many as the white lights would. The white lights are actually blocked when we lift the side wing. You can see that they would pretty much be useless when the side wings are up. But we don't actually use the white scene lights for anything but protection from nocturnal creatures. So if we have like some sort of nocturnal creature running around our camp at night, we can flip those on and that's usually enough to deter them from hanging out around our campsite. If it's not enough, we just hit the Viper alarm in conjunction with those and they scatter. GP Factor has created molly panels for the side wings, the Alucab Canopy Camper. They actually extend the full length of the side wing and we have them both on the driver and passenger side. Here on the driver side, we use them to hang our Blue Ridge Overland gear bags, which we keep stuff that we need for the shower cube and other things on this side of the vehicle. On the other side, we actually don't have any 
anything on there. And we use them to hang things while we're at camp since that's our living space on the passenger side. We are so happy to have the Lifesaver Jerry Can. We use it every single day. This is the only place that we get potable water from. Matter of fact, even when we fill our Alucab tank, which is inside the rig, we actually put that water into here before we drink it. This filters out 99.99999% of all bacteria and viruses. And when it's done, the filter will stop working and water won't come out. That's how you know that you need to replace the filter. So we haven't replaced the filter yet, but we use it every single day. And I don't know how we do this trip without it. Another thing we carry is this bag. This bag is made by Blue Ridge Overland Gear and inside it are a set of go treads. If you're not familiar with go treads, they're a fantastic product. You can use them to level. You can also use them to get out of sand, mud, and that type of stuff as a traction recovery device. Unlike Max Tracks, they actually fold upon themselves, so they're really easy to store, but they do get dirty. And so we really appreciate this bag from Blue Ridge Overland Gear and keeps the interior of our space clean. This is the Big Bull Roll-Up Bag by Red Ox Manufacturing out of Montana. I wasn't sure I was gonna take this one around the world, and I am so glad that I did. You can throw it on the ground, unroll it. it. Bags don't get better than this. It holds pretty much everything. We call it our camping bag. Inside here we have sunscreen, mosquito repellent, tent stakes, hammer, um, extra tips for our camelbacks. I mean, everything. It's like the kitchen sink. I, I can't say enough good things about this bag. And if you are looking for an all-purpose bag to take with you overlanding, this is it. It'll hang up. You roll it out, it's got pockets inside with heavy duty zippers, mesh, you can see everything that's in there. That's where these are. <laughs> you found them. <laughs> oh, fancy. Just a great bag. This bag makes you feel very manly, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> this thing has a lifetime warranty. It is a beast of a bag. Seriously, I, I, I can't. Big bowl roll up bag. Redox manufacturing. We only have two other modifications that we did above the wheels and tires, and that is a locking gas cap and a stubby antenna to replace the stock antenna from the Jeep Gladiator. One of the things that we did with Dauntless was to keep everything as stock as possible under the hood. The reason for this is that we're traveling around the world and mechanics might not have seen a lot of Gladiators. So we wanted any information that we found online to be usable for us without the mechanics having to look through anything that we couldn't figure out ourselves. There are a few modifications we did, we'll show you those. So right here is the solar controller, the MPPT for our solar panel that's on the hood, the VSS system by Cascadia 4x4. This is the control for the Viper alarm system. This is our snorkel, which provides the cold air into the intake. And on this side, way down here, we have the ARB air compressor, which is a single air compressor that sits up against the firewall using a way of life mount. And we've moved the air chalk here to make it more accessible to us. That's pretty much it under the hood. Dauntless has the Mopar two inch lift. The reason for that is that in many countries around the world, anything over a two inch lift is actually illegal. So we wanted to stay legal anywhere we drove around the world. It also has the max tow package, which means that we have the beefed up 410 gears both front and rear on the Dana 44 axles. The Mopar 2 inch lift comes standard with upgraded Fox shocks. You can see on Dauntless that we don't really have a rake. It sits very well and we're going to show you why when we go underneath. But first let's take a look at the wheels and tires. Wheels and tires are an important consideration for any overlander but overlanding around the world brings additional challenges like where are you going to replace those tires. So we asked some people, we asked Dan Greck from The Road Chose Me who said the BF Goodrich KO2 34-1050s were the way to go. I also bounced that off Scott Brady at Overland International and he concurred that that was a great choice for a global tire. So that's what we got on here, the BF Goodrich KO2 34-1050s which are essentially a 33 and a half inch tire. We have those wrapped around the worn diamond cutter wheels, which are a great wheel by Warren. They're kind of new to their line and they have a recessed valve stem, which is great for off-roading. It's gonna protect that valve stem from getting cut when you're running the trails. We've opted to switch out the diff covers for the ARB diff covers. These are beefier and they don't have a lip that can catch on anything when you're running the trails. We have these both on the front and the rear axle. You know what you can't see here? And that is any extra fuel. You don't see any rotopacks, nothing calling attention to the fact that we're carrying extra fuel. We did this intentionally. Instead, underneath Dauntless, we have the long range America fuel tank, 
which we had installed at Sonoran Expedition Collective in Tucson, Arizona. This tank provides us 17 gallons of additional fuel, so when you combine that with the 22 stock gallons that the Gladiator has, we have 39 gallons of fuel, which gives us just over 600 miles of range. The nice thing about the long range tank is that we don't have to add fuel to it if we don't want the extra weight, but we can stock up on fuel where it's cheaper or if we need the extended range in the country that we're traveling through. Using the long range America tank is very simple. There's a button that sits right next to the driver. You just hit it. It transfers fuel from the long range America tank to the main fuel tank. And you just keep driving. When we do decide to fill the tank, because it sits on the driver's side of the vehicle, it actually balances out the weight from the stock fuel tank, which sits on the passenger side of the vehicle, giving us more stability. Now you might think that adding a secondary tank like that under the rig would give you a loss of clearance. It really doesn't. It actually only sits a quarter inch lower than the stock fuel tank. And there are other components that actually sit lower than that. So it really doesn't matter at all. And lastly, with the Long Range America tank, I love the way they've designed it because you actually don't lose the ability to carry your spare tire underneath the rig. While right now we're only carrying one spare tire, when we get to Africa, we might opt to carry two spare tires for that portion of our journey. To keep Dauntless level and without a rake, we added the Dobinson's dual rate 3.5 inch rear coil springs, which are rated for 1,100 pounds, which is much less weight than we're carrying on the rear axle. We also added airlift airbags inside those Dobinson coils to allow us to adjust our ride depending on the terrain. And we added a Hellwig rear sway bar, which helps us with cornering and handling on the vehicle. In addition, we switched out the stock bump stops for Terraflex bump stops, which are a little bit better. All right, that's it on the exterior of Dauntless. You've probably heard enough from me. Brittany's much easier on the eyes. She's gonna take you through the interior of Dauntless and show you all the modifications we've done on the inside of our home for this journey around the world. Eric has given you a complete tour of the exterior of our home, but now it's time to move inside. We're going to start in the cab and move back to the habitat. Up on the dashboard, we have the 67 Designs Gladiator Series 55 rails mount with the camera mount and the mag mount G3 device holder and accessories. This system is made of carbon fiber and it's magnetic. The reason we chose this mounting system by 67 Designs is for its low profile. As we're going through border crossings and military checkpoints, we don't want to raise suspicion by having our dashboard look like an airplane cockpit. So we only mount a phone, camera, and our Garmin InReach Explorer Plus. And if we want to, it's really easy to even just remove devices right off the dash and put them out of sight quickly. We're using the Rexing S1 dash cam. It has three cameras that it comes with, but we're only using two of them. We're using the front and the passenger facing. We don't have the rear installed, but it's really good with clarifying issues with police officers when necessary. We haven't had to do that yet, fortunately. Sonoran Expedition Collective in Tucson, Arizona did this install for us, and it's really clean with no wires showing. We have a Viper alarm system. It has three sensors, a remote start, and it's really handy for scaring away nocturnal predators when necessary. We can activate it from inside the tent. I have two more things I want to show you up front. One is this visor by Blue Ridge Overland Gear. We use it every single day and it provides easy access to items that we use all the time. And then we also have WeatherTech mats on the floor in the foot wells on both the driver's side and the passenger side. We swear by these. They hold so much muck, water, dirt, and mud, and keep that away from our carpeting. Blue Ridge Overland Gear is such a phenomenal resource for keeping us organized. This right here is the attic. It's actually designed for the JL, but Sonoran Expedition Collective modified it so it would work with the JT. This is where we keep all of our sweaters, our hats, our cold weather gear. You would not believe how much stuff fits in here. On the back of both headrests, we have these clear front Velcro bags by Blue Ridge Overland Gear. They're really easy to remove. We can clearly see what's inside of them, grab and go. The last bags by Blue Ridge Overland Gear that I wanna show you right now are these fabulous roll-up bags that attach to the back of the headrest. Now, some people use these for trash because they're really durable and easy to clean, but we actually use them for Caspian's toys. You'll see that this is his car seat right here. He's able to reach right across, open these up, and pull out the Millennium Falcon on the go. 
When Eric talked to you earlier about the philosophy of our build, he mentioned that we only kept Caspian's seat in the back and we removed the other seats. What we put in their place was the Goose Gear 60 High Seat Delete that you can see right here. This was the component of our build that we were the most unsure about because the Gladiator door frame is cut really weird and we weren't sure whether this was going to work. But we measured really carefully, so did Goose Gear, and we ended up using the high platform, which allows us to use the Goose Gear fridge slide and bring our fridge right out. I love this part of our build so much. It makes my life so easy. The Goose Gear 60 high seat delete platform provides so much organizational structure to our back seat. This is actually a false panel, which allows us to store a lot of heavy items underneath for proper weight distribution. This is where we keep our heavy recovery gear, but it's really easy to access when we need it. Moving up, we have all of our computer bags here by Red Ox Manufacturing. And then moving back, we have our Demos Delta Pro shovel, which is attached to our go bag. This bag allows us to live in an emergency situation for 72 hours. If our vehicle is incapacitated and we can't deploy the tent, we have no shelter, we can grab out our bag and do whatever we need to do until we're rescued, which hopefully we'll never need, but we have it just in case. And this, my friends, is the National Luna 50 Legacy Dual Control Fridge Freezer by Equip Expedition Outfitters. In all seriousness, people, I love my fridge and how the placement of it worked out. It is so easy to access. I can access it while we're driving, but it's also accessible at camp under the awning. It's so perfect. Let's take a look inside, shall we? So these are the two compartments. We use both of them as fridge normally, but either of them can be freezer or either of them can be fridge. This is usually where I keep my fruit and then the larger items go in here. Now that we've taken a look through the whole cab, let's get to the really fun part, our habitat. So this is kind of on the line between exterior and interior, but since I'm normally the one working in the kitchen, I'll go ahead and show you. These are our two kitchen bags made by Adventure Tool Company out of Colorado. Come take a look. So this first one holds all of our plates, bowls, pots, and pans. And I mean all of them. These are all by Sea to Summit and they're collapsible. So they hardly take up any room when they're stored. They're made for backpacking. And I just want to show you the size of this pot and what it has in it. On the very inside, it has another bowl and another cup. Then this is a pot. This is my smaller pot. And then this that was holding it all is my biggest pot. And all of that stored in this space. Can she collapse it? All of that stored in this space inside my kitchen bag. Crazy, huh? This second kitchen bag holds all of my utensils, our utensils for eating and my utensils for cooking. While some of them are for backpacking, which makes them a lot more durable, others are just utensils that I love to use when I'm cooking. And then behind the two kitchen bags, we have these drop-down tables by GP Factor. I love using these, so easy to deploy and stow and just hold things as I'm cooking or going in and out of the tent. So many purpose-built details to show you. This bar comes standard with the Alucab Canopy Camper, but this bar we actually had custom fabricated by Sonoran Expedition Collective just to hold my kitchen bags because that was such an important component of our build. These are beautiful molly panels by GP Factor, who again is the same company that makes these beautiful drop-down tables specifically for the Canopy Camper really excited to take you inside and show you our home. This is a really special place for us. It's our haven. When everything around us is changing, this place remains the same. 
When we ordered the Alucab Canopy Camper, we knew that the bed was going to come empty and it was going to be up to us to design what this space looked like. We decided on Goose Gear storage system for the Alucab Canopy Camper to use as the foundation of our whole organizational system. It's laying on the universal deck plate. Up front, we have two double drawer systems, then two utility cabinets, and I'm sitting on the sleep deck system. It's three panels that connect from side to side so that Caspian has a place to sleep and that can expand because we can put another panel down as he gets bigger and needs more space to spread out. Underneath me is the bulkhead panel that kind of delineates where the storage is and then in the corner there's a corner panel that hides our electrical system so that we have easy access when fuses blow but it's out of sight. So let's just go around here inside and see what we can see. This is the control panel for the Red Arc Red Vision system, and this is the controller for our heater. Sonoran Expedition Collective in Tucson built in these two outlets that we use all the time. Sonoran Expedition Collective also designed this hanging system with extruded aluminum and these kayak hooks, and we can just use carabiners to move these whenever we want to. This bag holds my pantry items like crackers, chips, and bread that's crushable. And imagine this blue bag as like the chair in your bedroom where you throw things over <laughs> all the time. It kind of holds all that stuff. This is Caspian's bed here that maybe we can get him to tell you a little bit more about. Hi, I'm going to tell you about my room. And I have my lovies, my Meg formats, and my mattress, and everything we're going to show you. I hope you're enjoying the tour. Bye! Back here, this white container is a 13 gallon water tank by Alucab. We love the placement of this water tank because it puts the weight in the center of the vehicle. It's really easy to see how much water we have and there's even baffles inside so that when we're driving we can't hear the water sloshing back and forth. This is the fill for the water tank over here. But even though we have the water tank, we're still able to use Alucab's hanging bags. We have some wet wipes here. This is my laundry bag by Scrubba and my laundry hanging line. Caspian has a little fan there and that's his catch-all bag. This is kind of like the medicine cabinet bag. This is Caspian's pajamas and this is Caspian's shorts and shirts. Over here, we already showed you the shower head for our shower outside that's connected to our water pump. We have more extruded aluminum and the kayak hooks on this side. Then moving through here, the Alucab Canopy Camper comes built in with two USB and two 12 volts on each side of the tent. And this gray cord goes to our amazing fans. We just bought these online, but they're so amazing. They're by Old Polar and they have various speeds and they last pretty much all night when they're on a full charge. They are hiding our fire extinguisher in the Blue Ridge Overland gear holder and right above it we have a first aid kit for easy access. This bag is hanging on a custom molly panel that was fabricated by Sonoran Expedition Collective out of Tucson. And then up here we have a huge collection of Blue Ridge Overland gear storage bags. You can see that we love those clear fronts because we can easily see what we're looking for, open it up and grab what we need and all of these are removable so we can even take them outside the tent as needed. This double drawer system by Goose Gear holds our clothing. The bottom drawer is all of Eric's clothing and the top drawer is all of my clothing rolled up. What I just showed you is really all of our clothing, other than a few winter items that we keep in storage under the sleep deck system. This double drawer system is for our pantry items and a few kitchen accessories. You can see we just have some cans and containers, our jet boil is in here, and our jet boil fuel. Up top is more pantry items. We have a lot of peanut butter. And then I also have my spices in here that I put in little Ziploc bags. It's amazing how many storage options the Goose Gear system gives us. Right behind me, easily accessible, is our Coleman two burner dual fuel stove and various toiletry bags and other items. But there's a lot here that you can't see because there's a lot of components that are built in behind the Goose Gear. And I wanna tell you what those are. 
So starting here on this side, we have the Red Arc Manager 30, which helps control our electronic system. Moving backwards behind that, we have our Kotec 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And behind that is our Renogy lithium battery, which is a 170 amp hours. Behind me, behind the bulkhead, there is our Webasto heater, which puts out so much heat when we need it. And the water pump in the corner that leads up to the shower head. Underneath here on this side behind the goose gear cabinets is our ducting for the heater and it flows up to release out of the vent near where Caspian is sleeping but not too close to him and from there it can rise up to where Eric and I are sleeping upstairs in the tent. The Alucap Canopy Camper Habitat features a full-size bed upstairs. It comes built in with six pockets which are really great. They're basically your bedside table. Eric has three and I have three. On each side of the canopy camper, there are two windows. They have a blackout shape and they also have this screen. Just like the midge nets that you can order for downstairs, these have a very high density netting to keep out those annoying little gnats that we have had a lot of in Central America. There's also a window across from me that provides a beautiful view of the ocean when you happen to be parked there. There's also a rain fly and we have stanchions that put out the rain fly that also provide shade underneath and shelter from the rain if you don't have the awning deployed. This is one of the same National Luna lights that Eric showed you downstairs. There are three settings in white and three in red. And then speaking of lighting, we also have stock reading lights on each side of the bed. You can see it right here. So we just showed you the primary bed platform where we sleep, but there's also a secondary platform. It's much smaller. You can bring them both down to create a longer bed if you want to, but then you don't have access to drop down and go outside if you needed to answer a call of nature or a five-year-old at night. This is the platform that I'm talking about. You can see that it would give you a lot of extra bed length, which is really nice if you're taller. If you weren't using the Goose Gear Sleep Deck platform that I'm standing on right now, so say I was standing on the floor, you could actually lower this smaller bed platform and use it as a standing desk. And hey, those built-in Alucab USB outlets would be right beside your desk. We're almost finished with our walk around tour and we really hope that you've enjoyed it. But before we let you go, we want to make sure you understand just how much room there is inside the Alucab Canopy Camper, which is really phenomenal given how small the Jeep Gladiator is. Check out how much room I have to stand up and move around. So I'm on the floor right now, reaching up totally far away from the roof. Okay, now I'm up on the sleep platform and I'm barely just touching the roof. And to put this into perspective, I'm five, eight and a half, so not super short. And there's so much room inside of here. We absolutely love it. So we've showed you everything we could possibly think of that is on this rig, but don't miss what is not on this rig. That's right. As you make your own plans, please remember the context of our build. If we were building for North America only, then this Jeep Gladiator would be different, but we built ours specifically for global travel on all six habitable continents. Because of that, there's a lot of things that are specifically not on Dauntless. For example, we don't have oversized tires. There's no 35s, 37s, or 40s, as you commonly see in in overland builds in North America simply because you can't replace those all around the world. Also, we don't have ultra low sulfur diesel on this rig because again, that's not globally available. There's no propane on this rig because the fittings that you have to have to add propane back into your canister uh, change from country to country. So it's not a practical thing. Everything we have runs off unleaded and there's no major modifications under the hood. These are all really intentional decisions based on our goal of driving around the world for 10 to 15 years. But with a different goal, your build could be completely different and that's okay. And if you have any questions at all about your build or our build at all, hit us up in the comments. We do our very best to respond to each and every comment, both here on YouTube and on our Instagram. It's hard to believe, but we're nearing the end of our North American journey. On November 5th, 2022, we're putting our Jeep into a container and we're shipping it from Panama City to Colombia. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe. And if you like this video, give us a like. It helps us reach more people and let them know about what we're up to. 
And if you want to go deeper into our journey, check out Marco Polo. It's one of our Patreon perks that allows you to see a lot behind the scenes. So definitely check out our Patreon account. We share all kinds of stuff that never makes it anywhere else on social media, you guys. And with that, we, we will, will see, see you in, in the, the next, next video. video. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.